What happens when the 99 year lease on your flat actually runs out? Does the government really just take it back and give you nothing? Join us on Stacked Homes where we figure out what happens and whether or not it's fair. Hi, I'm Ryan Ong and thanks for joining me on Stacked Homes. Today we're going to look at a topic that's very important to many Singaporeans, that is whether or not their HDB flat is going to really be worth zero dollars at some point in the future once that lease expires and whether or not perhaps there are different ways that we should be approaching this. Well, let's start with the direct answer to this question. If we're going to look at the official line or the official stance, well, the answer is yes. Once the lease is up, it's up and the value of the flat really does drop to zero. This is the official position of what will happen. Everything gets returned to the state. We haven't actually seen this yet with an HDB flat at the time that we're discussing this, but we have seen that it really will happen. We've actually seen the government do this. We saw a batch of private properties in Geelang, for example, which did get taken back with no compensation. So the government is dead serious when they say that they will do this. The issue here is not every flat may actually run all the way to the end of its 99 year lease. There are two things that can happen in between. So the most ideal solution for most HDB flat owners is the Selective on Block Redevelopment Scheme or SERS. This is considered ideal by many because you get a replacement flat with a topped up 99 year lease. You may get further compensation as well for moving from your flat. But the problem with SERS is that it's only going to happen with a very small number of HDB projects. Right now, an estimated 4 to 5% of HDB estates will see SERS. It's not really a solution that you can count on. We do know that some HDB flat owners like to gamble a little bit on this. They like to try and pick locations where they think SERS will happen. But it's probably not something that you can reliably count on. The other thing that might happen, which we haven't seen yet, is the Voluntary on Block Redevelopment Scheme or VERSE. Now, when an HDB flat reaches around 70 years or older, there will be a VERSE offer made. And if sufficient flat owners consent to the VERSE, then the flats will be bought back by HDB and the payout will be based on factors such as the current market value and the remaining lease of the flats and so forth. If this sounds a little bit sketchy, it's because we haven't seen a verse exercise in Singapore yet, so we don't have the exact details right now. But one thing we do know for sure, the government has made clear that verse compensation will be less generous than SERS. On our end, we suspect the compensation will be somewhat based on Bala's curve, which we've talked about a little bit more in the Stacked Homes blog, so you can have a look at it for more details if you like. In essence, the Singapore Land Authority or SLA, when they're pricing the top up of leases, they seem to follow a pricing curve that's broadly similar to Bala's curve, where leasehold values are pegged as a percentage of freehold values. So, it's reasonable to expect that the value of your remaining lease will probably be priced roughly the same way. With Verse, what we will worry about is really the process of getting consent. Because if the process is anything like it is for a condo going on block, then the nature of many HDB projects can make it quite tough to get a common consensus. This is because Firstly, more HDB owners are pure home owners than investors. They are not so much moved by the allure of money or the bottom line. They may just like where they live. It can be a lot tougher to get consensus if the majority of people think like this. You also have a problem in that HDB has a higher and much more varied population and this can make a shared consensus tougher to acquire. It's not like a boutique condo where there's just 50 units and all the homeowners are generally from the same socioeconomic background and have the same general intent with their property. And of course, if we are looking at an old development, which we are at 70 plus years old, uh, we may have a lot of older folks there and we can't imagine many people agreeing to move when they're in their late 60s or their late 70s, especially not for that uh, small amount of compensation that they're getting. A factor that commonly gets brought up is you can just sell your HDB flat before the lease decay gets too advanced. On a personal level, that may fix the issue, although on a societal level, of course, this isn't really a solution as we're kicking the proverbial can down the road here. Someone still ends up holding on to that older flat. So there are some real obstacles to selling older flats here. 
For example, once your flat is nearing the final stages of its life, financing is a lot tougher to acquire. Can't use your CPF to buy a flat with 20 or fewer years left on the lease, for instance. Uh, banks won't finance flats with 30 or fewer years on the lease. And all of these things can make it quite tough to sell an old flat. Some people will point out, of course, that you know, really old flats selling at million dollar prices. And it is true. As you can see we've done a study on where these million dollar flats come from. Many of them are, in fact, amongst the oldest and most developed HDB towns. But the thing is, these are very mature locations which are highly desirable. For flats in less prime locations, depreciation and difficulty selling are going to be greater obstacles. Mind you, we would add the caveat that the speed of depreciation has been exaggerated a little bit in recent years. The good news is flats don't depreciate quite as fast as some people think they do. Nonetheless, Singaporeans should avoid buying flats that won't last till they are 90 because not every HDB town is going to be like uh, Tiong Bahru or Queenstown or Dishan. And even in those desirable locations, we will be very careful before making assumptions that you know that there's going to be SIRS or that those locations will continue to remain as desirable in the decades to come. So with that being said, what are some possible solutions to this 99-year lease issue and the effects that we'll see? Well, the first one that we can already see is, of course, that we build back denser. Uh, it's widely known that older HDB flats are bigger. Uh, this is a trend that's likely to continue if the population keeps increasing. Older HDB developments are bought over, they're demolished and they're rebuilt into projects, either private or public, uh, that can house more people. So a 20-storey block is demolished and in its place you find a 30-storey block with more units and so forth. Now one possible solution that uh, we think should be considered is the involvement of private developers. Property developers tend to be quite land start and we feel that many of them would be quite happy to buy over those old flats in those locations. Private developers are pretty eager to make on-block attempts for existing properties, we've seen that now, but currently they can't do so with HDB flats, they can only do it with private homes. This actually deepens our wealth divide because it means that if you are a private home owner, you have a massive advantage over an HDB flat owner. A person who owns an HDB flat uh, doesn't have much to look forward to other than SIRS, VERS or just being able to resell his flat to someone else. With a condo owner, you will notice that many leasehold condos, they still get bought at good prices because the expectation is that many condos won't even make it past their 40th year anyway. Right? They get bought over by a developer, the sellers are happy with the deal that they get and it becomes quite a different end game from an HDB flat owner. So it might make sense to have some degree of involvement from the private market here in sort of clearing and renewing the stock of older flats. Third possible solution and in fact that we could possibly see is changes to the lease renewal methods, right? We don't know how open the government is to doing this, but certainly many people have brought this up as a potential solution. So in many other countries with leasehold properties, Singapore is not the only one, the owners get given an opportunity to renew the lease at a certain cost. Possibly if we use this as a solution, then instead of forcibly evicting everyone once the lease runs out, HDB could impose a sort of a one-time charge or some other ways with which to renew that 99-year lease. Now this is not going to be less politically ugly and smooth if they allow this. Town councils have to be heavily involved in any such kind of move. We do think things can also get politically charged. At some point, there's going to be a few conspiracy theories about why it costs that much. Some people are going to say, you know, oh, is it because our town is in an opposition party area, whereas that town is not, and then is that going to be a price difference? So we, we do see that that's probably going to happen. If the lease drops to zero and people get evicted, that's also an ugly situation because there's going to be disputes about the fairness of that. That said, an option for lease renewal may not be a bad idea because still in the end, older residents or families living near schools, it does mitigate the need for them to have to move. That may be worth more than the cost of the disputes. Fourth sort of semi-solution, simply have an even more sandwich generation. At some point when HDB flat leases start to run out, we could of course look towards our children or grandchildren to come. And for the younger generation, what that means is if you have elderly parents who are running out of home, you may 
be the one who needs to help them with housing. This is a concern that some Singaporeans will face in the future as more flats near the end of their lease. Some people are also probably going to have to start paying attention to the age of their parents' home. For those who are going to run out of lease, our financial planning may need to be more extensive because not all retirees are going to be in a position to sell and move to a newer flat. So perhaps one other way to help here, one other solution is some schemes and subsidies to help Singaporeans who have to house their parents, especially if those parents have run out of lease. With all this being said and the, the worry about leases running out, there is one other important factor to take note of which can contribute to the overall picture on this. Let's not forget about the age of our citizens as well as our flats, right? So Singapore is a rapidly aging country. At some point, the older generation is gonna pass down. They will hand down their flats to their children. But uh, given that Singapore already has a 90% home ownership rate, chances are most of their children will already have their own flats, condos and so forth. They'll be unable to inherit that. We aren't sure exactly what the plans are in place for this, but if it's not controlled, it could lead to a deluge of uh, vacant resale flats on the market. Unless, of course, there's many different rule changes by then. Now, we understand that this is a little bit hard to visualize in 2022. Demand is through the roof right now and everyone is complaining about insufficient housing, but it is important to remain conscious in the long run of our aging problem and how that really impacts the number of flats that we should be having. But of course, some people might say that, you know, maybe a deluge of vacant flats and much lower prices isn't really a bad thing for the future generation. So that's an opinion as well. For more on the topic as it unfolds, do follow us on Stacked Homes. Please uh, do comment uh, below. Tell us what you think. We're very interested in hearing your opinions. Let us know your questions as well. We would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe. And of course, do follow us to get further updates and notifications on this as they become available. Uh, more concise breakdowns are available on the Stacked Homes editorial as well. So we do hope you'll drop by and have a look. Thank you so much again for joining me. This is Ryan from Stacked Homes. I'll see you again soon. Thank you.